all the planets of the solar system are slowly lining up. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune are about to form a straight line. This event, called the Parade of Planets, occurs once every 176 years. The last time this happened was almost 40 years ago, and it was a great chance to explore all these planets in one go. On August 20th, 1977, thousands of people gathered outside NASA's Kennedy Space Center. They came to witness the launch of the most ambitious and distant space mission in history. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition! Launch rocket Titan took off from Earth and left the atmosphere. As soon as the rocket reached outer space, it launched the probe Voyager 2, which began its journey. The probe consisted of a bus 1.5 feet in height and almost 6 feet wide. On top of it, there was a round 12-foot wide antenna. Most of the scientific equipment was mounted on a boom that extended 8 feet outward. On September 5, 1977, Voyager 1, the identical space probe, left our home planet. It sent us pictures of Earth and the Moon. It soon overtook Voyager 2, launched two weeks earlier. That's why the second probe has the number 1 in its name. And so the journey through dark space began. March 5, 1979. About four Earth-Sun distances away from our planet, Voyager 1 came close to Jupiter and prepared its scientific equipment to explore the planet. The probe had a dozen gadgets, including a two-camera system with narrow and wide-angle lenses. So it could take full-length photos of the planet with the wide-angle camera, as well as close-up photos of specific places on the planet and its satellites. The probe also had a radio science system to determine the atmospheric composition, weight, and gravitational fields of the planets it came across. Infrared and ultraviolet spectrometers could help measure radiation and temperature invisible to the human eye. Various sensors were used to examine cosmic rays. Voyager 1 was the first to find volcanoes outside Earth. Those were on Jupiter's satellite, Io. It has dozens of active volcanoes that constantly spew lava. Then the probe pointed its cameras at the Great Red Spot. That's how people learned that it was a giant cyclone-like storm that hasn't stopped for the entire history of observations of Jupiter. It was also the first time when lightning was detected outside of our home planet. And in the invisible spectrum, Voyager 1 noticed that Io acted like an electrical generator for Jupiter. Ions, which are charged particles, were constantly flying toward the gas giant. This electrical current was 5 million amps. Soon, Voyager 1 continued its journey. Five months later, Voyager 2 approached Jupiter 2. This gas giant has rings around it. They're not like Saturn's, though. Jupiter's rings consist mostly of dust. When the planet's rocky satellites collided, they turned into small debris. Gradually, this debris turned into fine dust. Then Voyager 2 approached Europa. This moon is completely covered by a crust of ice, and beneath it, there may be a liquid ocean where life can possibly exist. Voyager 2 was the first to capture the cracks in Europa's ice crust. While flying near Io, Voyager 2 discovered that six volcanoes on its surface were still erupting. This meant that the periods of activity of these volcanoes could last for months. Both space probes circled the gas giant several times and then dashed further into space. Such a gravitational maneuver allowed them to gain more speed and save fuel for the trip. By November 9, 1980, Voyager 1 had already traveled eight Earth-Sun distances away from home. The space probe arrived at Saturn. It discovered three new satellites of the gas giant, Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. This proved the theory that these were the moons that kept the planet's rings in line. It also turned out that unlike Jupiter's, Saturn's rings also contained ice. Voyager 1 took a peek at Titan, Saturn's largest satellite. It's 50% larger than the Moon and even has an atmosphere. It's the only place in the solar system besides Earth where liquid water has been proven to exist. That's why scientists don't deny the possibility of life there. Then it was time for another gravity maneuver. Voyager 1 once again darted away from the planet's orbit. This time, it was aiming upward relative to the line of the parade of planets. Almost a year later, Voyager 2 arrived there. It made a flyby of several of Saturn's icy satellites. 
Supposedly, a long time ago, these moons collided and knocked huge chunks of ice and rock out of each other. This debris orbited Saturn, collided, and slowly crumbled into dust, consisting of ice and rock. This is how the famous rings of Saturn were born. Another gravity maneuver, and Voyager 2 set off for the next gas giant. Five years later, it arrived at its destination, 17 Earth-Sun distances away from our planet. For the first time ever, a human-made object approached Uranus. Voyager 2 discovered 11 new moons there. The probe also found that Uranus was the coldest planet in the solar system. Its temperature is negative 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That's four times colder than the temperature at the South Pole. At that time, the Deep Space Network was being tested on Earth for the first time. It's a network of radio telescopes all over the planet. They aim at certain points in the sky to establish communication with extremely distant objects. These telescopes have been successfully receiving signals from Voyagers 1 and 2. August 25, 1989. Voyager 2 had already traveled 23 Earth-Sun distances and arrived at Neptune. It was the first time people received images of this blue planet from such a close distance. The probe discovered six new moons there and also took the first pictures of the planet's rings. Engineers then turned off the probe's cameras to save power for its main computer and the instruments that measured the solar and interstellar wind. Voyager 2 left Neptune and headed into deep space. That's why it no longer needed the cameras. A few months later, Voyager 1 sent its last photo back to Earth. It was a family portrait of our entire solar system. Every pale dot was a planet. You can barely recognize Earth in the picture. After that, the camera was turned off to save power. This was the start of the interstellar mission for Voyager 1. For 15 years, Voyager 1 had been flying to the edge of the solar system. On December 16, 2004, the probe passed through the termination shock. This is where the solar wind suddenly slows down and heats up after colliding with the interstellar wind. The space probe managed to endure this test and continued its journey. In 2007, Voyager 2 crossed the same boundary. At that point, sensors recorded a temperature of about 266 degrees Fahrenheit, but the probe managed to withstand it and continued its journey through the dark cosmos. Both Voyagers moved through interstellar space in different directions. They discovered that the heliosphere, the solar wind bubble, is not perfectly round, but more like an egg. August 25, 2012. Voyager 1 became the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. It's now also the most distant artificial object in human history. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 also left the solar system. The two probes continued their journey into deep space. Right now, the Voyagers have been operational for 44 years. Voyager 1 has traveled 153 Earth-Sun distances and is moving forward at 38,000 miles per hour. In about 300 years, the probes will reach the Oort cloud. This is a hypothetical region around the solar system with nothing but asteroids and blocks of ice. Scientists believe they might reach the nearest stars in the next 40,000 years. Perhaps one day, the Voyagers will enter these star systems and explore unknown worlds. There may be planets there that look like ours. The probes may even be able to find an intelligent civilization there. For this purpose, each Voyager carries a golden record with a message on it. There are 115 images. Among them, there's our number systems, a map of the solar system and pictures of its planets, diagrams of human DNA, portraits of people, and landscapes from Earth. There's also greetings in 55 of Earth's languages, including the oldest and newest of them. There are also 90 minutes of music from every corner of our planet. The Voyagers also carry a device to play these sounds. If another civilization gets this record, their scientists could decode the data step by step. And then, that civilization may decide to pay us a friendly visit. They'll have to repeat the heroic journey of the Voyagers, though. Dozens of light years through dark space. Then, crossing the border of the solar system, and finally, flying past Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and the asteroid belt toward the little blue planet. We can only hope that people will be advanced enough to welcome them.